हेलो गाइस वेलकम बैक टू सफलता क्लास 15 सो आज हमारी 15th क्लास है इससे पहले की जितनी भी क्लासेस हैं अगर आपने एक भी क्लास मिस करी हो तो प्लेलिस्ट पूरी की पूरी बनी हुई है दिल्ली हाई कोर्ट सीनियर पे के नाम से उसमें जा करके आप सारे डिक्टेशंस लिख सकते हो आज जो तो हम दो डिक्टेशंस लिखने वाले हैं जो पहले 100 से 105 पर लिखेंगे और उसके बाद 110 से 115 पर लिखेंगे उसके बाद में जनरल और लीगल फ्रेजेस का डिक्टेशन लेंगे और लास्ट में मैं पंक्चुएशन रूल्स आपको रिवाइज करवाऊंगा तो आज का हमारा क्लास का फॉर्मेट ये रहने वाला है इसके अलावा कल सुबह आठ बजे से प्रकाश बैच लॉन्च हो रहा है उस बैच के अंदर मैं आपको राजस्थान हाई कोर्ट की जूनियर पीए की प्रिपरेशन करवा रहा हूं जिसके अंदर 90 डब्ल्यू की स्पीड मांगी है अगर आपने वो फॉर्म फिलअप किया है तो उस बैच को भी ज्वाइन करना मत भूलिएगा सो so, आज जो है अभी हम हमारी क्लास स्टार्ट करते हैं स्टार्ट करते हैं हम हमारे फर्स्ट डिक्टेशन से जो की है हंड्रेड से हंड्रेड पर सो गेट रेडी थ्री टू वन स्टार्ट मिस्टर चेयरमैन आई बैग टू मूव डेट द बिल टू प्रिवेंट द इन्फिक्शन ऑफ अननेसेसरी पेन और सफरिंग ऑन एनिमल्स एंड फॉर डेट परपज टू अमेंड द लॉ रिलेटिंग टू द प्रिवेंशन ऑफ क्रुअलिटी टू एनिमल्स एज रिपोर्टेड बाय द जॉइंट कमिटी ऑफ द हाउसेज be taken into consideration i will make a few observations just to point out what changes have been made by the joint select committee and also highlight the important points of this bill on which members would be requested to focus their attention honorable members are aware that the present act the prevention of cruelty to animals act has been there for the last 70 years with very few changes in it additionally suo moto the committee has taken note of specific areas that require updates to address emerging concerns regarding animals welfare it is for the first time after 7 decades that an attempt is being made to have the law as we want it although it may not be ideal to begin with it will be recalled that on the 5th march 1954 on the floor of this house shrimati rukmani devi introduced a bill entitled the prevention of cruelty to animals bill 1953 during the debate on this bill the prime minister gave his support to the basic approach to the problem but did not agree to a number of clauses in that bill thereafter on the assurance of the government that a committee would be appointed shrimati rukmani devi was kind enough to withdraw that bill at that time acting on that assurance such a committee was appointed according to the terms of reference the committee was required to go into the whole question relating to prevention of cruelty to animals examine the present legislation in the country and corresponding legislation in other civilized countries clearly define the word animal for the purpose of legislation and make such recommendations as are considered necessary to address the issue of cruelty to animals and its abatement having regard to the requirements of scientific and medical research and veterinary treatment dietary requirements of the population modern methods of slaughtering animals etc the committee in their report drew our attention to a number of deficiencies in the prevention of cruelty to animals act 1890 as already stated in the statement of objects and reasons the existing act has a restricted scope 
the legislation enacted on the subject by the various state governments is not uniform we are trying to make it by this legislation as uniform as it could possibly be these deficiencies and the measures recommended by the prevention of cruelty to animals committee to overcome the same have been the subject of frequent discussions in parliament the present bill was introduced in this house on 13th march 1959 the motion for reference of the bill to a joint committee of both the houses was adopted by this house on the 13th august 1959 and by the lok sabha on the 27th august 1959 thereafter detailed examination of the bill clause by clause was taken up by the joint committee which consisted of 30 members from lok sabha and 15 from this house the bill that is now before the house purports to give effect to most of the recommendations of that committee which required central legislation the bill when passed will extend to the whole of india except the state of jammu and kashmir additionally provisions regarding the quashing of fir have been included to address concerns related to the fair and just handling of criminal cases stop सो so गाइज ये हमारा फर्स्ट डिक्टेशन था आई होप आपने ये लिख लिया होगा ये एनिमल्स के ऊपर बेस्ड है तो अगर आप इसको प्रिपेयर करते हो तो आपके लिए काफ़ी बेनिफिट रहेगा सो so, अब आप इसको ट्रांसक्राइब करिए इसमें गलतियां चेक करिए उसके बाद आप सेकंड डिक्टेशन लिखिए सेकंड डिक्टेशन की जो स्पीड है वो भी हंड्रेड से हंड्रेड रहने वाली है सो so, स्टार्ट करते हैं गेट रेडी टू वन स्टार्ट it may be noticed that section 2 of the mental health act 1987 defines mentally ill person to mean a person who is in need of treatment by reason of any mental disorder other than mental retardation mental disorder may further be of varying degree this court in राम नारायण गुप्ता वर्सेज रामेश्वरी वाइल कंसिडरिंग अ क्वेश्चन एज टू वेदर अ पार्टी टू द मैरिज इंडीड द क्वेश्चन ऑफ अ लर्नेड काउंसिल अगेंस्ट रेडली गिविंग अ नेम टू अ थिंग इज वर्थ रिकॉलिंग गिविंग समथिंग अ नेम सीम्स टू हैव अ डेडनिंग इन्फ्लुएंस अपॉन ऑल अवर रिलेशंस टू इट it brings matters to a finality nothing further seems to need to be done the disease has been identified the necessity for further understanding of it has ceased to exist it will also be relevant to note that the court has power to issue appropriate direction for protection of human rights of mentally ill persons and to see to it that a person suffering from mental illness gets adequate protection in terms of the mental health act it has been noticed that the mentally retarded persons are incompetent to give evidence however it is stated a person of unsound mind may give evidence if the trial judge is satisfied that he is then of sufficient understanding to give rational evidence his suffering from delusions does not render him incompetent we may further notice that this court has held a direction to give specimen signature or handwriting for their comparison with the disputed handwriting 
is not violative of clause 3 of article 20 of the constitution of india such issues have cropped up in the united states of america in dissolution of marriage proceedings or a child custody dispute in the course of such proceedings mental health and parental fitness is sometimes called into question by one of the parties frequently one party will seek to introduce evidence of the other party's mental health through medical records however federal common law state common law state statutes and the federal rules of evidence recognize the importance of protecting confidential communication with mental health professionals by recognizing a patient privilege. Still in such court proceedings, it has been held by US courts that no privilege is absolute especially when it relates to determining the fitness of the parents to have the custody of the child. The privilege can seriously impact the child custody and dissolution of the marriage proceedings. It was held that such privilege, if granted, can seriously impact the child custody and dissolution of marriage proceedings. If the nature of the information relates directly to the well-being of the child or to the parent's ability to adequately care for child and the court believes the child is potentially in danger, courts are likely to admit the information despite a patient's expectation of confidentiality. There are two competing interests involved when a court determines whether to compel discovery of a patient litigant's mental health records over his objection in a child custody dispute. The first involves the privacy, confidentiality and privilege expectation of both the patient and the treating mental health professional in those communications. The second involves the application of the best interests of the children standard Virtually every jurisdiction in the United States makes a child custody determination based upon the best interest of the child. Stop. So guys, this second dictation 100 WPM ki speed per complete ho gaya hai. Ab aap in dono dictation ko transcribe kariye. Uske baad mein aap 110 wala bhi zaroor likhye ga. Ab joh hai hum 110 mein shuru kar rahe hai dictation ko likhna. So get ready. 3. Two, one, start. Mr. Chairman, I beg to move that the bill to prevent the infliction of unnecessary pain or suffering on animals and for that purpose to amend the law relating to the prevention of cruelty to animals as reported by the Joint Committee of the Houses be taken into consideration. I will make a few observations just to point out what changes have been made by the Joint Select Committee and also highlight the important points of this bill on which members would be requested to focus their attention. Honorable members are aware that the present Act the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Act has been there for the last 70 years with very few changes in it. Additionally, Suomoto, the committee has taken note of specific areas that require updates to address emerging concerns regarding animal welfare. It is for the first time after seven decades that an attempt is being made to have the law as we want it. 
although it may not be idle to begin with it will be recalled that on the 5th march 1954 on the floor of this house shrimati rukmani devi introduced a bill entitled the Pro prevention of cruelty to animals bill 1953 during the debate on this bill the prime minister gave his support to the basic approach to the problem but did not agree to a number of clauses in that bill thereafter on the assurance of the government that a committee would be appointed shrimati rukmani devi was kind enough to withdraw that bill at that time acting on that assurance such a committee was appointed according to the terms of reference the committee was required to go into the whole question relating to prevention of cruelty to animals examine the present legislation in the country and corresponding legislation in other civilized countries clearly define the word animal for the purpose of legislation and make such recommendations as are considered necessary to address the issue of cruelty to animals and its abatement having regard to the requirements of scientific and medical research and veterinary treatment dietary requirements of the population modern methods of slaughtering animals etc the committee in their report drew our attention to a number of deficiencies in the prevention of cruelty to animals act 1890 as already stated in the statement of objects and reasons the existing act has a restricted scope the legislation enacted on the subject by the various state governments is not uniform we are trying to make it by this legislation as uniform as it could possibly be these deficiencies and the measures recommended by the prevention of cruelty to animals committee to overcome the same have been the subject of frequent discussions in parliament the present bill was introduced in this house on the 13th march 1959 the motion for reference of the bill to a joint committee of both the houses was adopted by this house on the 13th august 1959 and by the lok sabha on the 27th august 1959 thereafter detailed examination of the bill clause by clause was taken up by the joint committee which considered of 30 members from lok sabha and 15 from this house the bill that is now before the house purports to give effect to most of the recommendations of that committee which required central legislation the bill when passed will extend to a whole of india except the state of jammu and kashmir additionally provisions regarding the quashing of fir have been included to address concerns related to the fair and just handling of criminal cases stop so guys ye humne first dictation 110 par likh liya hai अगर आप लिख पा रहे हो तो वेल एंड गुड है नहीं लिख पा रहे हो तो पहले जो 100 से 105 वाला है उनको लिखिए सो so, अब हम जो है वो सेकंड डिक्टेशन शुरू करने वाले हैं गेट रेडी थ्री टू वन स्टार्ट इट मे बी नोटिस्ड दैट सेक्शन टू ऑफ द मेंटल हेल्थ एक्ट 1987 डिफाइंस मेंटली इल person to mean a person who is in need of treatment by reason of any mental disorder other than mental retardation mental disorder may further be of varying degree this court in ram narayan gupta versus rameshwari while considering a question 
as to whether a party to the marriage was suffering indeed the question of a learned counsel against to readily giving a name to a thing is worth recalling giving something a name seems to have a deadening influence upon all our relations to it it bring matter to a finality nothing further seems to need to be done the disease has been identified the necessity for further understanding of it has ceased to exist it will also be relevant to note that the court has power to issue appropriate direction for protection of human rights of mentally ill persons and to see to it that a person suffering from mental illness gets adequate protection in terms of the mental health act it has been noticed that the mentally retarded persons are incompetent to give evidence however it is stated a person of unsound mind may give evidence if the trial judge is satisfied that he is then of sufficient understanding to give rational evidence his suffering from delusions does not render him incompetent we may further notice that this court has held a direction to give specimen signature or handwriting for their comparison with the disputed handwriting is not violative of clause 3 of article 20 of the constitution of india such issues have cropped up in the united states of america in dissolution of marriage proceedings or a child custody dispute in the course of such proceedings mental health and parental fitness is sometimes called into question by one of the parties frequently one party will seek to introduce evidence of the other party's mental health through medical records however federal common law state common law state statutes and the federal rules of evidence recognize the importance of protecting confidential communication with mental health professionals by recognizing a patient privilege still in such court proceedings it has been held by us courts that no privilege is absolutely especially when it relates to determining the fitness of the parents to have the custody of the child the privilege can seriously impact the child custody and dissolution of the marriage proceedings it was held that such privilege if granted can seriously impact the child custody and dissolution of marriage proceedings if the nature of the information relates directly to the well being of the child or to the parent's ability to adequately care for child and the court believes the child is potentially in danger courts are likely to admit the information despite a patient's expectation of confidentiality there are two competing interests involved when a court determines whether to compel discovery of a patient litigant's mental health records over his objection in a child custody dispute the first involves the privacy confidentiality and privilege expectation of both the patient and the treating mental health professionals in those communications the second involves the application of the best interest of the children standard virtually every jurisdiction in the united states make a child custody determination based upon the best interest of the child स्टॉप सो गाइज ये सेकेंड डिक्टेशन हमारा कंप्लीट हो गया है ये डिक्टेशन थोड़ा लीगल वे में ज़्यादा था इसमें जनरल वर्ड्स थोड़े कम थे लीगल वर्ड्स ज़्यादा थे सो आई होप आपने ये लिख लिया होगा अब जो है हम फ्रेजेस का डिक्टेशन लिखने वाले हैं 
सो गेट रेडी थ्री टू वन स्टार्ट एनिमल वेलफेयर ह्यूमेन ट्रीटमेंट एबंडनमेंट वेटनरी केयर एनिमल शेल्टर एनिमल रेस्क्यू क्रुएल्टी फ्री एनिमल राइट्स एनिमल अब्यूज नेग्लेक्ट प्रोटेक्शन एंटी क्रुएल्टी लॉज एंगजाइटी डिप्रेशन स्ट्रेस थेरेपी काउंसलिंग साइकोलॉजिस्ट साइकेट्रिस्ट मेंटल इलनेस बाइपोलर डिसऑर्डर सेल्फ केयर माइंडफुलनेस इमोशनल वेलबींग मेंटल हेल्थ अवेयरनेस रिजिलियंस सुअमोटो कंटेम्प्ट ऑफ कोर्ट अबैटमेंट कॉग्निजेबल ऑफेंस कॉशिंग ऑफ एफ आई आर पार्डन एक्विटल जुवेनाइल जस्टिस सी आर पी सी लोक अदालत ड्यू प्रोसेस अमेंडमेंट एडवोकेट जनरल डिफेमेशन सेशंस कोर्ट स्टॉप सो हमारे फ्रेजेस का डिक्टेशन भी कंप्लीट हो गया है अब मैं आपको आज पंक्चुएशन रूल्स जो हमने पहले किए थे उसमें से एक रिवाइज करवा रहा हूँ ये पंक्चुएशन रूल था बट के लिए बहुत से लोगों को याद होगा जिनको याद नहीं है वो अभी रिवाइज कर लीजिए बट के लिए दो रूल्स काम में आते हैं अगर दो इंडिपेंडेंट सेंटेंसेस को कनेक्ट करने के लिए बट वर्ड का यूज होता है तो उससे पहले कॉमा लगाया जाता है और अगर डिपेंडेंट सेंटेंसेस के बीच में बट का यूज होता है तो कॉमा नहीं लगता है एग्जाम्पल के लिए अगर दो इंडिपेंडेंट सेंटेंसेस लिखे हैं हमने ही स्टडीड ऑल नाइट फॉर द एग्जाम ही स्टिल डिडेंट परफॉर्म वेल उससे पहले हमने बीच में बट अगर वर्ड यूज किया है तो उससे पहले कॉमा लगेगा अब यहाँ पर दो सेंटेंसेस हैं दोनों इंडिपेंडेंट सेंटेंसेस हैं पहले वाले सेंटेंस के ऊपर सेकेंड वाला सेंटेंस जो है वो डिपेंड नहीं करता है इसीलिए दो इंडिपेंडेंट सेंटेंसेस हैं और बीच में बट का वर्ड यूज बट वर्ड यूज हुआ है इससे पहले हमने कॉमा प्लेस कर दिया है इसके मैंने काफी सारे एग्जाम्पल्स दे रखे हैं आप इसको पढ़ लीजिए पढ़ लीजिएगा सेकेंड एग्जाम्पल है She studied hard but didn't perform well on the exam. तो अब ये सेंटेंस जो है वो पूरा एक दूसरे के ऊपर डिपेंडेंट है यहाँ पर जब बर्ड वर्ड यूज हुआ है तो उससे पहले कॉमा का प्लेसमेंट हमने नहीं किया है सो so, ये दो रूल्स हैं बर्ड वर्ड के लिए आई होप आपको समझ में आ गए होंगे दोनों रूल्स के लिए एग्जाम्पल्स गिवन है आप इनको पी डी एफ से डाउनलोड करके पढ़ लीजिएगा सो so, आज की क्लास जो है वो हमारी यहीं पर एंड होती है इसके अलावा प्रकाश बैच कल सुबह आठ बजे से शुरू हो रहा है तो उसको ज्वाइन करना मत भूलिएगा इसके अलावा मेरी पर्सनल टेलीग्राम आईडी आपको डिस्क्रिप्शन में और साथ में इस पीडीएफ में गिवन है आप वहां से मुझे अगर कांटेक्ट करना चाहते हो तो कांटेक्ट भी कर सकते हो तब तक के लिए थैंक यू एवरीवन एंड बाय बाय